Hello students, this is Professor Vicente Saya, and this is the presentation of uh, Chapter 13, Current Liabilities and uh, Contingencies. As you already know, there are three main objectives uh, for this class. Number one, we are to understand the accounting principles relative to the subject matter or to the relevant topic and how to apply those uh, principles. Then number two, based on our understanding and the application of the accounting principles, we then prepare uh, or construct the underlying financial statement, be it uh, income statement, balance sheet, or statement of cash flows. Then number three, we analyze and uh, interpret the financial statements. In other words, we then figure out uh, or, or interpret uh, what the numbers actually mean. So to recap, three main objectives for the whole course. Uh, understanding accounting principles relative to the subject matter and the applications. Uh, based on that, we prepare the underlying financial statements and interpret, uh, analyze and interpret them. Now, uh, that being said, we said that in chapter 13, we are going to learn the accounting principles specifically, uh, the accounting principles and their applications specifically as they relate to current liabilities and uh, contingencies. Now, um, uh, as you know, current liabilities and uh, contingencies are reported on the balance sheet. The balance sheet consists of assets, liability, and uh, stockholders' equity. And of course, the balance sheet is a financial statement that shows the financial condition of a company at a point in time. And these three elements, the second element is our main focus, and we say for reporting purposes, the, uh, the liabilities is divided into uh, two classifications. We have uh, current liabilities and we have uh, long-term uh, liabilities. So obviously, our focus uh, is on current uh, uh, liabilities. Now, uh, it is also important that uh, by the time we are done talking about the applicable accounting principles and the applications, eventually, we are going to report the information in the balance sheet. Now, I just want to go ahead and talk about uh, the difference between recording versus reporting at this point in time. So when we talk about recording, we are talking about recording the applicable transactions in the general journal, then we put to the ledger, prepare the trial balance, so on and so forth. Ultimately, the information is reported in the, in the financial statement, in this case, specifically, uh, the balance sheet. Now, that being said, let's take a look at uh, the specific objectives of chapter 13. Again, chapter 13 deals with two main issues, current liabilities and uh, contingencies. Now, the objectives are, or the specific learning objectives of chapter 13 are as follows. Number one, we are going to talk about the nature, type, and valuation of current liabilities. We are going to talk about the classifications of short-term uh, uh, obligations expected to be refinanced. We are going to identify different types of employee-related uh, liabilities. Uh, we, talk, we are going to talk about the criteria to account uh, for and disclose gain and loss contingency. When we talk about account for, this, another word for it is record. Record account for uh, are used uh, uh, interchangeably. Then number five, we are going to talk about the, uh, 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 explain the accounting for different types of uh, loss contingencies and indicate how to present, analyze uh, uh, liabilities and contingencies. So those are the six objectives or specific learning objectives of chapter 13. So let's take a look at uh, the first one. So we are going to start off by talking about what uh, current liabilities are. Before we talk about current liabilities, the question is what is a liability? Here we said that PASB defined liabilities as 
Probable future sacrifices of economic benefits arising from present obligations of a particular entity to transfer assets or provide services to other entities in the future as a result of past transactions or events. So this definition sounds very, very fancy. Uh, oh, before we talk about the definitions, I just want to go ahead and bring to your attention the fact that uh, this chapter is uh, divided into three categories. Number one, current liabilities. Number two, uh, contingencies. So those are the two main uh, issues in this chapter. Then the third part of chapter three is we are going to talk about presentation and analysis of the subject matter. So let's go back to the definition of uh, liabilities. So like I said, this is fancy, fancy definition of uh, liability. Now, what are we saying here? It's a probable future sacrifices of economic benefits. What does that mean? Meaning that our future economic benefits, in other words, our future assets are going to be used to settle our current obligations. Uh, how? By transferring our asset, for example, you are going to use your cash or any other asset in the future to pay your present obligations or providing services how does providing service or services uh, pay off your obligations let me give you a true life uh, example as you know i'm a practicing cpa and i did uh, some accounting work for one of my clients that has uh, an auto shop so when we did the work, my client owed me. So a couple of months later, my, 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 I decided to take my car to my client's shop for auto repairs. Now, by the time my client was done fixing my car, he asked me for money. Then I brought to his attention that they still owe us some money. So in my client's book, when we provided them with accounting services, they debit accounting expense and credit accounts payable because they owe us. Now that they have provided us with services or my company with services to settle their obligations, now they have to debit uh, accounts payable to get rid of the, their obligation and credit their service income. So by providing services, they have gotten rid of their obligations. So that is what they mean here by when they say, uh, 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 transfer assets or provide services to other entities in the future as a result of past transactions or events. So, in summary, the question is what is a liability? Like we discussed in principles of accounting, not in a fancy sense, we said the liability is a company's obligation. That's simple. Now, the question now is what are current liabilities? We said that Current liabilities are obligations whose liquidation is reasonably expected to require use of existing resources probably classified as current assets or creation of other current uh, liabilities. Another fancy, oh, before we talk about current liabilities, let's take a look at uh, the definition of current assets here. This, as you already know, they said that current assets are cash or other assets that, company reason that the company reasonably expect to convert to cash sell or consume in operation within a single operating cycle or within a year, whichever is longer. What are we talking about here? So current asset consists of cash and any other asset that you can convert to cash within a year or that you can use up within a year, like supplies, accounts receivable, so on and so forth. And they also talk about within a single operating cycle what is operating cycle as we discussed in principles of accounting operating cycle is that period of time that takes you to spend cash during the normal course of doing your business and get the cash back for some companies the operating cycle is longer than a year for most companies their operating cycle is uh, shorter than a year so now what are current liabilities so current liabilities are those obligations that you expect to pay off using your current assets, all right? Or you create other current liabilities to replace 
the current uh, liabilities. So moving along, here we have uh, 10 different examples of current liabilities. And we are going to talk about uh, these 10 different uh, examples of uh, current liabilities uh, in details. So let's take a look at the first one. Account stable is the first example of current liability. Another name for it is trade account stable. You are already familiar with this in your previous uh, uh, accounting classes. We said that account stable basically consists of the balances that you owe to others for goods, supplies, or services purchased on account. So if we have a company on the south side and we decided to buy our office supplies from uh, all fixed months on a regular basis without paying, then uh, that will result in accounts payable. Or if another company provides us with services without paying right away, that would also be captured or recorded or tracked in accounts payable. Now, all these terms are very important. Uh, the terms of the sale is a two term stands for 2%. If we pay within 10 days, or, or, or the, 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 the full balance is due in 30 days. So again, like I said, we are very much uh, comfortable with account stable. Now let's take a look at uh, the second example of uh, current uh, liability. Here, we have no receivable. In contrast to account stable, account stable is our promise to pay the vendor and the promise is oral promise, is verbal. But note payable is a promise put in writing. So when we put the promise to pay the third party or our vendor in writing, then that is note payable. Now for us, it is note payable. For the person that we are promising to pay for that company is note receivable. But again, we are dealing with our books because the, 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 the issue on hand here, uh, we are dealing with current liabilities. So, uh, usually, no stable arise from purchasing, purchases, financing, or other transactions. It could be classified as short term, it could be long term. So, if we promise to pay within a year or within the operating cycle of our company, obviously that is a, that, that, that obligation on no stable will be classified as short term. If we promise to pay uh, in 18 or in 18 months or two years, uh, uh, assuming that that is uh, longer than our, our operating cycle, of course that would be long term. The no stable could be interest bearing or zero interest bearing. We are going to talk about that uh, in a minute. So let's take a look at the uh, the application or the example of interest bearing note. So this company or the bank agrees to lend $100,000 uh, uh, on March 4, 2014 to Landscape Company. If Landscape signs a $100,000 uh, 6% per month note, Landscape records the cash received on March 1st as follows. Cash is being debited and the note stable is being credited. So I think uh, uh, we are going to cut off at this point for part one of this presentation.